Good morning, my name is Jackie. Welcome to Super Enthused. It is very early in the morning. It's before 6.30 a.m. I am up and I know the rest of my NASA social participants are also up for day two of our NASA social itinerary. Now, today was supposed to be the launch of the CRS-16 resupply cargo mission to the International Space Station. That is the reason we are all here. The group that I am with was invited, we all applied, we were accepted, and we were invited to come here and cover the launch for our platforms, whether they be blogs, social media, photography, websites, etc. But going into space is a tricky business. We all knew this going in. We knew there was a possibility that the launch would be delayed or even scrubbed. It happens. If you watch launches regularly live on NASA TV or whatever platform, you'll know that launches are often delayed. I watch them pretty much all the time and I know that it, it happens. So it happened. Today's launch has been delayed for tomorrow. I'm going to do my best day and be here for tomorrow but today's activities are still going on so having said all that I'm ready to make the best of today we're gonna to have a tour of the vehicle assembly building we're going to get to hang out again with our fellow NASA social participants which is definitely a major benefit to this it's it's really cool meeting all these wonderful people and fellow space enthusiasts so it's very early, there's a bright green light in front of me. Before we head out, I need coffee. So I'm gonna head into the lobby of the hotel, grab some coffee, and head back over and, and get ready for a day of activities. <laughs> Here we go, loading up. Everybody's ready for another day of cool stuff. about to go into the vehicle like assembly baby. building <laughs> and we're all pretty pumped. We've been told not to walk and film, so we're stopping to take an appropriate clip. We are going in. We're not walking and filming, we're stopping, we're filming. This is amazing. Okay, gotta catch her. NASA social, taking the photos, video. This high bay right here, this is this for the the Apollo program, this is this is the second stage. That was the third stage over there. The first stage was always processed down in the middle of the thing. There's four high bays in here. The building was originally designed to go six high bays and another 120 feet up. But Von Braun wasn't sure that he had enough rocket uh, for what he wanted to do. And in fact he had planned on going on to Mars with his, his rocket. Uh, yeah, he was way ahead of his time there, thing. So if we ever decide to, to build a big, big rocket, we can push this thing up another 120 feet taller and two more high bays out uh, north of here. This here is a mock-up for the SLS right here. Uh, anytime you, we, you build a new rocket or anything, you mock it up. You have to. Uh, the platforms are all in, ready to go, but when we get ready, get ready to put it in there, it really looks good on paper. You look over here in Tower A, on the 16th floor, which is where the crane's at right there, Back in that room in there is where we have put, put all the uh, remains of the Columbia. Wow. It's all up there. The remains uh, of the Columbia up, up there, there on the 16th there. Very, floor. Very, very, very There's actually work going on today, so we can only go into a certain point. We're hearing about how the wind up there is really, really intense, so you have to be so careful. We are all soaking it in. We have such a limited time here. We're trying to listen to the stories and also just soak in the emotional experience of being in here. And there's work going on, so it kind of adds to how cool it is. The wind coming in through the bay door is, feels phenomenal. I feel like I should be saying more, but I gotta be honest, I'm kind of overcome. I'm just gonna show you what we're seeing because 
Take it in. Oh, we have to go already. That was fast. That was fast. We're done. Our tour is done. It was awesome. Back on the bus. Bye, Vehicle Assembly Building. We love you. It was so fun. Hopefully we'll be back. This is an area that you can access on the bus tours, and I have been up here before, but this is my first time getting it on film. So what we were just looking at is Pad B Launch Complex 39. To the south, we have Launch Complex 39 Pad A, and this is the historic pad where the Apollo and Space Shuttle missions began. Pad A. And the NASA Social Group are getting photographs of the launch pads, and again, just soaking it in, soaking in the experience kind of flat and gray out but it feels really nice. A chance to wear my dog hair covered NASA sweater. I met those people. That's awesome. Aldrin and These tall structures are lightning towers and that is a water tower. So these record lightning strikes and protect the launch pad. We just took another fun group photo. We had to be up here. Resident, <laughs> with resident shorties. I'm taking video, guys. Oh, oh no. it's okay. for, the for the vlog. For the vlog. For the vlog. For the vlog. All the big moon rockets left from 39A, with the exception of one, Apollo 10, left from 39B. Let's go back. July the 20th, 1969, at 10:56:15 p.m. That's when 37-year-old, 5'11", 165-pound Neil Alden Armstrong, born August 5th, 1930, with people all over the world watching, yours truly included, Neil Armstrong climbed down a ladder that had nine steps on it. Stepped off that ladder on that round landing pad just below the ladder. Stepped off that landing pad with his left foot, and he put that first human footprint on the moon. That footprint was 13 inches long, 6 inches wide. Looked like Bigfoot was walking around up there. Just a few days after those first historical footprints on the moon, an exceptionally beautiful bouquet of flowers appeared on President Kennedy's grave in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia with a little card, and it was anonymous. And it simply said, Mr. President, the eagle has landed. Man's Grace Adventure took place right here. We're sure glad you're here, and I'm proud to have you on Mr. Tom's Lesson 43 today. Here we are. We've been allowed to get off the bus. Steel steps coming out of the floor, so we've got to be very careful of walking. assembly building we're up here on the launch pad now we're on to the next we're getting a little bit of surprises today because of the change in our agenda for the day time to go back to the bus let's go Quite 
pleasant and make a beautiful view. And that was one of the last buildings that was left over from there. Um, the astronauts uh, come out here right before launch and everything and have dinner and everything. Um, there was always, there's a, uh, an area they've got uh, these uh, curio cabinets with the uh, wine bottles in it. And every, every crew has a wine bottle in there. We can't go back up in there today, but you can see the rocket land down there. There's your rocket there, folks. Maybe tomorrow we'll see it go. Hopefully we will see this launch tomorrow. But it is laying down and they are exchanging the cargo. Come on. We're now entering the International Space Station Processing Facility. There's even a pretty Christmas tree in here. We're going to get a tour of the veggie lab. Here goes our group. We're gonna go check out the veggie lab. Totally chill, totally casual. Come on in, everybody. Thank you. It is a little wow. warm in here because we have so many lights. The plants are growing. The food that we send, sending food to Mars on a regular basis will call, cost a lot of money. So if we're going to go, eventually we're going to have to learn how to grow our own food. Also, imagine being trapped in a little capsule for months at a time and just eating meals ready to eat or vitamins. And, and just how great would it be to eat something fresh? have fresh lettuce or a pepper or a tomato, you know, so that's that's kind of our goal. So currently we're working on the space station and learning how to grow plants in microgravity. Bring moisture to plants, roots in space is a challenge. So one method that we have is the porous tube nutri nutrient delivery system and this is actually one of my experiments here is where I made a passive system that doesn't use any electricity, it doesn't have any pumps, it just runs solely on capillary forces and transpiration from the plants that pull water into it. Well we're not running the space shuttle anymore and there's a lot of space shuttle tiles lying around and we're looking for media, you know, what, what can we use? Something lighter than soil. Shuttle tiles are very light, so we got a shuttle tile yeah, here cool. and we're actually growing a plant in shuttle tiles. And so it's another media that we're exploring that, you know, maybe we can use this tile, grow plants on it. What I'll try later is to clean it, autoclave it, and see if it can be used over and over again. Plant growth in space has been going on for a long time and actually the Russians started it. But during the space shuttle era, we did plant growth systems in the PGU or the plant growth unit. And Basically, they would just do germination methods and see you know, what it took to get plants to sprout, get them growing. So we're standing on the backs of giants, I guess, where there's a lot of plant work that has been done in the past. Our director actually came up with the idea of doing seed films. And it's the same thing as the Listerine strips. You guys know the Listerine strips that you put in your mouth? This is the same stuff, but instead they have seeds embedded on them. And what you can do is you can get the seed film and actually stick it onto the porous tube and that would be a way for an astronaut to actually plant seeds onto a porous tube or any system in space and it would just be, be pre-arranged. Right. And so this is why we have the NFT system here. And outrageous lettuce is our control. If, 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 we, if we can't grow the outrageous lettuce, then we won't be able to grow anything else. This is the thought. And over here, we talked about the zinnias. And you might be able to this Google sometimes and just like Google uh, ISS zinnias or space zinnias and you'll see the pillow floating upside down or there's even the Valentine's Day flowers. That flower came, was on the space station. We brought it back down to Earth. We've had these seeds for a couple years and uh, we hadn't been able to grow them. We don't know why. We had one intern, Lane, who came in this semester and she's like, I want to try it. So we gave her a bunch of seeds thinking that maybe one or two would grow all of them grew. So <laughs> now we have all of these zinnias growing, I think 46 plants, and we get to do experiments like I have the zinnia space zinnia roundabout going on, which is a light experiment. Does adding more light make the plant grow more? And actually you kind of can see that this one definitely has more <coughs> flowers compared to the other ones. 
Ooh, we like a little danger in this group. Microgravity water delivery test bay. Test bed. Test bed. Test bed. Step on the sticky thing. These experiments are being done to prepare for growing plants on the International Space Station and in space in general. So that one day astronauts and space travelers will be able to be self-sufficient and grow fresh food in space. It costs a lot, food is very heavy, seeds can even be heavy. So the more we can grow plants from the seed up in space, the better. That was a really cool experience. And now, back to the bus because we've got an agenda, right? Agenda. Yes. We are very True. authorized yeah, personnel always. Always. with an agenda. <laughs> We're waiting. We're waiting for entry. There we go. Everybody's filing in. And here we are at Swamp Works. Already pretty impressive. Inside of Swamp Works, we have prototypes, we have projects in the making. We have autonomous flying vehicles. We have a massive 3D printer, and I'm sure your imagination can help you to figure out how that could be useful in space. We have the Swarmies. It's part of a competition, and they work like ants in their autonomous vehicles. We have a simulated moon environment with moon dust filled with the same type of dust that would be on the moon, the dirt. You cannot breathe this. When people go in to work in there, they need to be fully suited. You, that would be harmful to breathe for a human. And there are experiments going on inside of there to test moon dust on robotics. We have all sorts of wonderful prototypes and experiments that are helping us to prepare for the next level of work on the moon and in space. Swamp Works is very cool. This is where ideas are built out, hands on prototypes, experiments. Very, very cool to see this. This is where the wheels are turning and the work is being done. And now, back through the fences and back on the bus. Alligator! <laughs> nice. That's a beaut. <laughs> Welp, we've wrapped up day two of our NASA social adventure. But wait, there's more. Day three has been added on because the launch has been delayed until tomorrow. Now there's a possibility it could be delayed again. It's never 100% with space travel. So hopefully tomorrow we will be experiencing a launch. And if so, that will be now a separate video. I only planned on doing two videos out of this experience, two days, but now there's a third day. So day one will be its own video because we did so many cool things. Day two is definitely going to be its own video because we did so many cool things today. And the launch will be its own video because it deserves its own dedicated space. So thank you again to NASA and the NASA Social Program for having us out here. Thankfully, I have one extra day that I can stay out here, so let's all hope together, and you'll probably know before this is released whether the launch happened or not. 
So thank you for joining me for today's adventure. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you're new here, please make sure you're subscribed. I do adventures all over Florida and beyond. Travel, off the beaten path, hidden gems, all sorts of really cool stuff. If it's cool, if it's neat, I'm gonna try to be there and bring it to you. So thank you guys again. I appreciate you watching. I hope you stick around. I'll see you for the next adventure. And until then, you know what to do. Stay enthused.